Okay, I'd like to call the April meeting to order, please. We'll see you next Friday. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we started this evening with our uh, normal agenda, uh, and then we're going to get to uh, jump right into this noise ordinance once we get through the uh, clerk report. Uh, so let's start with the approval of the prior town board meeting minutes. So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, clerk report, Mary, do you mind? Town Clerk's Report, March 2018. Planning Board, sub subdivision application, $125. Ordinance, $25. Dog licenses, $37.50. Building permits, $1,100. Certificates of occupancy, $200. Town Clerk fees for community house donations, $100. Total check for the general fund, $1,587.50. Paid to New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets for dog licenses, $15. Total for March 2018, $1,602.50. Okay, thank you, Mary. Uh, mail review? Motion. Oh, no, we are not doing that. We're not accepting it anymore. We're going to have to. That's what I'm told. Yeah. What do you have in the mail? Look, uh, uh, for the things. mail, the only thing I have enclo um, enclosed is a dog control officer inspection report completed on 3-15-2018. This inspection relates to agriculture and markets laws and regulations, which may be viewed on the website. As the report indicates, the dog control officer services were rated satisfactory. Please make note of any comments listed on the report. Dog control officer services are subject to inspection by this agency on a regular basis. Notify the office within 30 days of any changes in DCO services. Perfect. We also had one, I believe, for the uh, Pine Plains, and they had a satisfactory report. Okay, excellent. The animals are taken care of. Yeah. Very good. Uh, all right, correspondence for the web committee. Comments, questions, complaints from the web committee? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Perfect. All right, move on. Um, before we go down the list, of what I would like to do is just jump ahead a little bit. I uh, invited uh, Mr. Schmidt here from uh, Morse Associates to uh, join us this evening to uh, go over the uh, noise ordinance uh, laws that we've been discussing and working on. Uh, we still have not. Uh, finalized a version to produce to the public. We're still working through this. Uh, we did have some more changes made this past month. Um, I had it come down tonight so we could discuss this, go over it again. Once we do have a final version put together, we will give it to the public. We're going to probably try to set the hearing for maybe next month, and that will give everybody common time to come in and discuss it with us. But uh, it's still in progress, and that's why you know I thought we might have it ahead of time before this meeting, but we haven't had a chance to get it ready. So that's why it's not been distributed uh, at this point. So um, I'd like to welcome George and thank you for coming down. I know you uh, produced the two copies here with most of the changes we discussed. Um, what I'd like to do is maybe just go over some of this quickly, um, see what changes we still have some tweaking to do. We found a couple tonight even already. And I know uh, a question was brought up on the second one about the variance, which we're going to discuss as well. So um, on local law number two, I see most of everything that we talked about was incorporated. I haven't had a couple questions or a few things that didn't make it in there. So maybe I'll let me start with uh, what you were concerned about. Right. Right. So uh, one of them, which I believe we talked about before the meeting, but for everybody, uh, there was the definition of a real property line, and we didn't want that definition to include the situation of a landlord with tenants. The landlord can set whatever the sound policy is for his own units. And the way that it's currently written, it looks like you could read it to apply to the individual units of a landlord-owned building. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so that was one 
thing that we were considering. That's uh, real property line definition B, and I believe that was something we were going to run past Andy, but hasn't right. been done yet. Right, I did not get an answer as to how to craft that language yet. Okay. And then along that line, we would say that if the apartments are individually owned or condominiums individually owned, even if they're attached, then it would be the resident who would be responsible. But if, if, if the whole building is owned by a landlord and there's tenants, then it would be the landlord's responsibility. Mm -hmm. However, we want to work that. Thank you. Right. That's, that's yeah. what you're saying. Uh, I think so. Yeah. But did you go into what happens if the landlord has a wayward tenant that, you know, is, he can't get out and is making lots of noise? I mean, did you clarify that part? Well, I think that would be, again, I'm not the lawyer, but I think that would be handled as any other infraction would be handled under the law. In other words, if, if most violations are given to the landlord that I'm aware of not to the tenant. So if the landlord needs to take action against the tenant, that's the landlord's responsibility, but not, not the municipality. Yeah, my concern, as I mentioned in the prior meeting, was the fact of how long it takes sometimes to legally evict. Evict somebody. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the landlord keeping, you know, you know, the landlord's doing their best job to get that bad tenant out, but, you know, to make sure that the law this noise ordinance, the timing, mm -hmm. penalties or whatever, goes with what the law is for the poor landlord trying to get rid of the bad tenant. Mm -hmm. right. I, yeah, I did check with, with Sam, you know, our, our new zoning enforcement officer, he said that the, the uh, citation is always to the property owner. Okay? And, and, it, and it would be up to the landlord to evict if that's what he needs to do. And we would hope that uh, since there's some leeway that the judge might take that into consideration, but basically it's the property owner that gets the citation and has to appear before the judge, and it's up to him to to control his tenants and, he, and evict if necessary. Right, so. and I've been a landlord for 25 years, and only once did I have a noise problem, but um, it was, you know, it was a, I've had some bad tenants, and it's, it's a problem when you, if they're making noise, they're probably bad in every other way. They're probably stiffing you on the rent and everything else. And it's <clears throat> it takes a while, is what I'm trying to say. So please be considerate when you pass this law of that special situation that you know the poor landlord can only move with 60 days notice, and then you know you have to send things certified, and things have to come back, and you know it's, it, it takes time. Did we uh, pick that up with Andy? I know we discussed it in the board meeting, but I don't know if Andy had any suggestions on how we might adapt the law. I, I did not talk to Andy about that. I, 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 don't, I don't think it should be adapted to a tenant. I well, think it should be addressed to the, for primarily my reason is uh, the town doesn't review your tenants when you rent to them. That's up to you. You also have uh, generally a lease where you have uh, securities and, and and that can be compensated. Right. And I can, kick, and I can evict that. them, quote unquote evict them, if they don't make it livable and they're annoying enough people. What right. I'm trying to say is my rights as a landlady in trying to evict them are very prescribed by the state of New York in terms of the notice I have to give, the time they have to respond. It's like you can't get rid of them tomorrow. <coughs> You know, yeah. so what I'm trying to say is, and then when they get really angry, and, you know, if it takes me 60 or 90 days to get rid of them, I don't want to be facing jail because your your things are so tightly prescribed. Yeah, I, I, think, I, uh, I don't think I think if you're uh, actually in the process of evicting somebody, obviously you'll be in contact with the judge already. And then the leniency would be awarded to, you know, if, right. if, in certain situations, if that's the situation, I'm sure it would be taken into account for. So. Okay, well, I, I just I, think it would be nice to have that. Yeah, I, I agree with that because as you read the law now, if you just had a tenant who is terrible and they make noise night after night, three nights you're up to the minimum of $2,500 uh, fine. And if that continues for 
it could be 90 days to get a tenant out. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what I'd rather have the letter of the law such that if you're in that situation, there's not we're not just relying on the niceness of a judge or whatever. Right, we, what, we why don't we, uh, that's George, you're going to be talking to Andy anyway, but what, Correct. bring that situation up to him, and if there's a, a you know a normal legal way to do it, mm -hmm. put it in. If there's not, then you know we leave it. Because I promise you, the landlord wants to get rid of them just as much as the neighbors want mm -hmm. them gone. Yeah. Maybe it might not be possible to put the fine against the tenant. I don't know the legal side, but we might be able to have something in there to say that the fine is waived if the landlord has begun the process of eviction or, or something to that effect. I, I, I think uh, at the last meeting you had mentioned it was a uh, rental to like bar. Uh, bar no, students. I don't rent to bar students. I have not oh, rented okay. bar students in a long time. It doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter. But the situation is a situation. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, my, I can rent to bar students, but I haven't rented in a long time. Okay. So. My, my thought was that I don't discriminate. They, they could be international students, and if they leave and go back to wherever they came from, there's no, no recourse for the town to actually enforce that either. Well, so, I mean, there could be. I think, I, mean, I think there could be concerns. In, in but I think the, the question is whether or not, if, if the landlord is attempting to evict while the tenant yes, continues, agreed, agreed. Then can we put if something that process in there is in place, that, that gives some direction to the judge to, right. to give them time? To waive the penalties right. 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 process. Yeah. If, it, if it's an actually in process, right. if he's gives the dragging his feet, then he pays a fine and, and then starts sure. process and gets the, the greater fines. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Absolutely. All right. So we can check with Andy on that to see if that's legal right. language that can be included yeah, on that part. How, how to accomplish that. Okay. All right. So there's number one change. Question. All right. Could she point out some time things? Oh, yeah. I, I think that was more my error. That was on page seven. And that was um, letter F at the top called out Friday and Saturday specifically, or did not specify Friday, Saturday. But I believe G encompasses that. Oh. So that, that, you know, I was just looking for... G is for industrial property. Yeah, yeah I think what happened is when we went through some edits, I think something got left out. Uh, okay, because, I mean, right now there's Friday nothing... Friday and Saturday would be, uh, I think, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, I think what the board wanted last time was for the revision to read for 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. for Friday and Saturday. Sunday through Thursday should be seven to ten. Correct. That yeah, that that is what I remember. That's what I didn't like know it there to, was to read. Right. Yeah. So that just an additional note there. The way it's currently written, seven a.m. to ten p.m. is actually reversed. It should be because the restriction is for the nighttime restriction, so it should be eleven to seven and ten well, to seven, I believe. Well, nighttime would be no sound volume, right? So so in other words, you're not allowed to. You want to regulate the, the sound during the business hours, the actual working time. That's not what at we're nighttime talking. when people are at home, presumably sleeping. Um, you don't typically want that sound being generated. That's not what we discussed in the previous ones. The previous meetings we were discussing, uh, in the case of a venue or whatever, that the sound at the border would not go above 65, which is roughly speaking volume. Right. And that was for the nighttime, so that the music would cut off at well, 10 or 11, off. depending on whether you're at the weekend mm -hmm. or uh, during a weeknight. Right, again, it cuts off at 10. So between so, 10 and 7, they can't be making sound. No, we were saying between, between 7 and 10, and 10, like in the morning, right through the day, that, till 10 o'clock at night, you could be playing that music or having your event, but then no. Well, well sure, but. We were talking about at night when a cutoff goes into place at the 65 decibel. That's what we've been discussing. We were, the beginning. We were discussing that, and, and as George pointed out, that really was kind of backwards because once you hit 10 or 11, whatever night it is, 10 or 11, you don't want sound generated because that's quiet time. So during the day is when, you, you, know, you know, up until that 10 o'clock at night, you can have the acceptable volume level. You know, you can be playing your music, having your parties, whatever you want to do. Once you hit 10 or 11 o'clock, then it's quiet. And that's the well, point of the variance, in other words, if, if there's some... Then we have a problem here because... The reason why you need to make sound above that, that's when you would be aligned with the variance, to say, hey, the, the way this can't is, do that. The way this is written, there's no limit at night. No, it's quiet. It, yeah. It doesn't say quiet. It says... 
if you read F, uh, and the ones before that don't have a, um, a particular uh, level. So F is really where we're talking. It starts, at, that says that you can't cause a noise measured at the real property line uh, in excess of 65 decibels between the hours of 7 a.m. and 11 p.m. But there's no restriction saying what you could do after 11 p.m. And what can make it more clear? And, and I strongly disagree with this 65 decibel level uh, during the daytime because people need to mow their lawns. That's when you're out and about. I think keeping it to a conversational level during the daytime is absurd. I mean, you have to change the tree, you gotta do yard work. You're mm -hmm. gonna play a game of football in your backyard. I mean, those are just kind of normal things that people do during the daytime. So. I'm okay with 65 at night, but it doesn't make sense in the daytime. 65 at night would be very, very loud. <laughs> that's somebody talking on their property. I think, I think that should be legal. That's right. That's what the I board mean, wants. <laughs> well, I think um, you want to say that out loud. Say it out loud. That on your property, that person who's going to live next door to me is going to shoot cannons. <laughs> And they have the right to do so because it's all their property. Well, I, I mean, it has to be reasonable, Evan, that you don't want to annoy your neighbors. The, I, I no, really I, understand your point. Right, I think yeah. if we're going to set a baseline for what's reasonable, in my view, it should be reasonable if you get a call at 11.30 at night to go and talk on your cell phone in your backyard at your property line. And during the day, it should be legal to mow your lawn. So that's 100 and Ten right. People do right. mow their lawns during the day, and, they and it would be home. illegal. What? And they do it on Saturday and Sunday when they're home, and no one's made complaints, and people seem to understand that. So I do. I, but that's why I'm saying what we have here it doesn't make sense because uh, I, be I agree with Evan. Uh, you know, you do want to be able to mow your lawn, but at for the nighttime, I'm. Um, um, wondering if maybe we should consider the, we did discuss earlier about a percentage of the ambient, certain right, number a certain number level over ambient, and perhaps at night that would be more appropriate. I know it's causing more of a mix and some confusion there, but um, certainly at nighttime you do want some quiet. I think the question is the daytime level, not really necessarily the nighttime level. Yes, right. So we're complaining. If, if the board is okay with the 65 at nighttime level that we were okay with before, then I don't have any further comment there. And if we're discussing daytime, then I would suggest something that allows you to mow your lawn, paint a tree that fell, and those kind of normal activities, have a game of football. And that was the question we were going to bring up: is do we want to put a number on a daytime? Because that's what we, we were discussing: so do we want to cap like the daytime at a higher? You know, 120, whatever, 110, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have a cap to 65 mm -hmm. decibels because during the day, so yeah. right, right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And zero at night. Not say that. Anything at night. Right. <laughs> that, that's when you right. put up your fireworks. <laughs> yeah, at, at, at night there's no limit. After 10 o'clock, if we change that from 11 to 10. Right. So after 10 o'clock, there's no limit. Well, there's no limit, it, which means there's nothing allowed. Uh, not well, the way I read it, because this is a restriction on the noise level, so if there's no limit, there's, there's no restriction. Well, that's why George said we could clarify that. Mm -hmm. We're saying there's nothing allowed, but do we want to do that, or do we want to keep it at what we were discussing, the 65 during the day, or the night, right. and then put a higher level during the day? Mm -hmm. yeah, that, I would do that, or I would, I mean, the reason that we brought this up was because... During the day, or during the night. No? What? Day trip. I, I tell you, right now we've got uh, noise. That, that's a snow removal ice control. We don't have lawnmowers. Maybe 60. We have three conversations going on. We have one conversation. It says no person shall cause to or permit to be caused noise from power tools, lawnmowers, leaf blowers, or agricultural equipment are operated on residential property between 11 p and 7 a. So that's only part of the question. But think about it.
about the landscaper people. There's a lot of people in the landscaping business and the, and the farming industry here. If anybody has actually had a farm, you know that the equipment makes a lot of noise. So do the leaf blowers and everything else. Those ideals should be allowed during working hours, daylight hours. Well, agricultural anything to do with farm is exempt. And what about like you know managing the property, like you know <clears throat> picking up the leaves and doing spring cleanup, or cutting down trees, and you know you got a saw well, cutting down, you know what I'm saying? Between seven a.m. and eleven p.m. or ten p.m. Yeah, I mean as long as it's allowed. But mm -hmm. what I'm hearing is that's going to be banned because it could be too noisy. Mm -hmm. um, I think it could be read that way. And then you have other things like, you know, children playing or yeah. you have some friends yeah. over you. I mean, you must have somewhere normal maintenance of residential and business operations, right? Well, it's kind of a question of do you want to list every possible item that you want to allow people to do on their property or do you want to put a more general guideline and let people do whatever falls within that guideline? And I, I tend to say, put a guideline in place and let people do whatever they want rather than making a list and then you forget something and right. you know I string think. turners aren't allowed because they weren't listed or you know something so one second to, if Sarah would you repeat what you just said I mean you can have some somewhere in that document I hope you have you know a, a sentence that noise generated by agricultural and farm activities and the normal maintenance of residential and business operations is or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Allow, allowed. Allowed. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's not, I mean, we're not going to be quiet. We live. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we should write a law that reflects that. Right, right well, now, we have snow I mean, and snow but, you, know, you have to have some guidelines, yeah. and that's, that's a general statement. Yeah, no more started. And allows you to do what you but want on your property. property. Yeah, power tools, lawn mowers, leaf blowers. Well, we constantly get into that argument, how much do we regulate, how much do we over, you know, over dictate what people can do on our properties. We've brought this up many times. We don't really want to oh, do well, that, but we want to protect our neighbors. This sounds like a baseline. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So I guess my, my question back to you, George, mm -hmm. what would be your thought on the nighttime? Again, I know you said 65 at night is like really loud. Just your upset. opinion. Think, your opinion. I mean, they could have a lot of upset revenues. Typically, you know, businesses and other people are precluded from generating anything above ambient sound mm -hmm. at night. But again, it's your town, your board, so you know, it's hometown rules in our state. Um, but then again, the thought process mm -hmm. there is that again, this is quiet time. People are coming home, mm -hmm. coming back from wherever they were, where sounds were generated. Um, maybe from the event in town, you know, at one of the places that have such things, and then you're coming home and you're trying to go to sleep, and nope, now you're listening to 65 decibels. Um, well, you won't be listening to 65 decibels, but it drops off, it'll be less than that. Depends where you are. Yeah, I mean, you could have like very, very close neighbors. You could, could have a neighbor line, right here. Could have a line you're, here. you're not going to go to sleep. I think the bigger concern is why, the exact, right. So there's a way, like I said, that that's what the board has to, you know, unfortunately, <coughs> struggle with, as to what level do you want to uh, well, restrict or not restrict, um, and to what levels? I mean, again, with leaf blowers, chainsaws, etc. To what level you want to do it? And you got to remember that these things are measured on, a, on an equivalent basis in LEQ. So if, you, if you're out there running a saw for an hour, for instance, um, versus I set up a, uh, a logging shop, and this is my yard, and I have my crew there, and they're running chainsaws from seven to. 10 or 7 to 9 um, all day, that's a big difference. Um, right. But it's still a sound, it's still a sound level, it's still from a chainsaw. Um, so now you're in court trying to say, well, well, I can't, why is he not allowed to do it, or maybe he's allowed to do it, um, and then somebody else isn't allowed to do it. Why? Because he's not in commerce and he is. That doesn't hold up in court. You know, there has to be a reason or rationale, and so if it's allowed, it's allowed. What about people who rent land to hunt? What about hunting season? Again, the LEQ on that is nothing. Not, that's an instantaneous sound. So we hear a gunshot for a second. It's a constant, that's it. Constant sound. If it was 15 minutes. Yeah, if it was constantly shooting at a, at a range, for instance, that LEQ on the meter then would be loud because that's a weighted average over time. So it would be loud, 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 loud because everyone's constantly shooting at a very 
virtually no downtime, if you will, um, for hours or, or however long they're shooting for versus target practice at home, uh, residential hunt, you know, residential hunting, you know, hunting and things like that, it's louder than not. I mean, probably about 100 in the room. I don't think I've ever fired over three shots at a deer. And that was only because I wanted to see how many shots I could get off. I'm wondering why everyone's <laughs> shooting so much. Um, you know, usually you shoot once and that's it. Yeah. Um, so again, that LEQ is absolutely nothing. Um, it's, it would be a gun range that would raise that well, level up. I just want to say that when the uh, duck season opens, mm -hmm. down on the it's, river, it's nonstop at five yeah. in the morning yeah. for an hour. Yeah. So I guess back to Evan's point is the daytime limits. Um, and I think that's what we're talking about here. You know, right. how much do you want to allow? You know, do you want, because if somebody sets up shop on a property line, do you want to listen to uh, a bulldozer run for eight hours straight? I mean, that's what we have to consider. And by setting, and I don't necessarily have a problem with the nighttime being quiet. I don't know why I don't. But it doesn't I'm a say business that owner. Here, though. Well, I mean, that, that, that to me is acceptable because that's when people want their quiet time. But I do have a problem um, with the daytime limit. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, maybe we should consider something higher. Yeah. Because sixty-five is very, very low for you know normal maintenance mm -hmm. of properties and taking care of everything during the day. Is, is there something with the um, like you're saying the LEQ where mm -hmm. you can put some type of a time restriction? You know, like if someone's, I mean, if you're going ten hours throughout the day, if there's very can. loud yes. noise, that may be a little bit more intrusive than if somebody mows their lawn, they take two mm -hmm. hours to mow it. Mm -hmm. It that's does. not such a big deal. So, yeah. I mean, there, there may be, I don't know if mm -hmm. there's something. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We can put in, like, say, anything. Any, any of those things are. I, I just don't, I'm not yeah. overly familiar with the meter and how that works and how the measurements. Well, yeah, the meter just works. I mean, you turn it on like I did last time or two months ago when I was here, and it just starts recording data. Okay. Um, and then the LEQ is going to be a weighted average over however long that meter's running. Okay. So, again, um, the, the, the only yeah, the complication would be, however long that is, uh, whoever is running the meter needs to stay there. So is, the code enforcement officer has to stay there then for 10 hours or, or 8 hours. Um, currently the law has 15 minutes. You know, okay. and whatever it is, uh, it to verify whether something is or is not a violation. Right. So again, there's pros and cons to everything, but everything's on the table, of course, for however you want to craft your law. And not having a draft in front of me, it's tough to know, but uh, have you defined residential versus commercial versus industrial with standards for each? There's a difference between industrial. residential and industrial, mm -hmm. with the industrial has a 75, 75 and residential. I don't know if it says residential or if it's just everything else is... It's, you know, yeah, yeah, everything else one of our earlier conversation when we right. first started speaking about that's, this. That's you remember no this level goes above level. 10 decibels of what it exists currently. That, that's a double to everyone who's listening. Now I know uh, another town from talking to the supervisor, another town just passed, or is passing, passed at uh, Town of Keenan, I believe it was 90, 90 decibels. Right. And they just put a flat die 90 on, that was it. And they didn't go through a lot of detail. It's that's day simple. and night, that's just... I think just 90 and... Where is this? Where is it? <laughs> so... <laughs> it's probably going to get knocked down as soon as someone challenges it, quite honestly. So... Yeah, I'm not a lawyer, but 90 would so be long. just about painful. Well, we have to, we have to consider, you know, if we're going to change... <laughs> if we're going to change this during the day for operating hours, I mean, remember, that's right up till 10 p.m. So, you know, during the day, it's different, you mow along, but now if we, we raise it, you know, right up to 10 p.m., somebody could have it up to 90 or 100, and that's quite a bit louder than you want yeah. to have on your property line. And I don't know what Canaan put in there, because I didn't read their law, but I is that an LAQ, or is that instantaneous? Yeah, I didn't get to read uh, it. Because again, you know, I could yell at 90 if I wanted for an instant. I wouldn't be able to maintain that. Right. Um, the other thing we could do is, we started this process because there was concern about uh, you know, music at events was the primary thing. Yeah. We could just go with a targeted law that does that and uh, take more time to consider what, if anything, is appropriate to put in place. Well, I don't want a single law just for events. I, mean, I think well, always no, I don't mean just for events, yeah. but our original cutoff with the 65 at night was designed for, okay, now that the music shut off and people start leaving. Right. Um, and we could go with that as, like, here's the first pass and if we figure out what we want, you know, take some more time to think about that. 
I'd rather just do it all at once. I think I'd rather keep it all together too as well. I just think it's, it's going to be easier, cleaner. Um, well, what do you think? What do you think that we should do with this, Bob? You've been quiet. <laughs> i got to have your opinion. Uncharacteristic. <laughs> Uncharacteristic. He's not allowed to speak. Yeah, I'm just curious. About a certain decibel. <laughs> <laughs> We're inside the building. We'll never he's, make sound. He's being right. very good, well, according <laughs> to the rules. It says, uh, and F, no person shall cause or permit to be caused any noise when measured by sound level meter at the property line, you know, within, in which is emanating is in excess of 65 between <coughs> hours of 7 and 10. All right, 7 a.m. and 10, 10 p.m. So that's, that's all daytime, right? That's saying daytime. And, and, then, and then there's some exceptions for, for snowblowers, and there's some mention of uh, on page six, starting with uh, power tools and lawn, lawn equipment, but, but it's, that's not an exception. That's unreasonable noise prohibited. So there's no exception for lawn mowers, but there is for snow snow blowers. So in the wintertime, you can make more noise than in the summertime when you're maintaining your property. So I think lawn mowers should go in there also. Yeah. And even if you want to add other sim similar. Property maintenance equipment that's you know not specifically mentioned. Sarah has mentioned it's all there. Too, but oh, one more should probably be mentioned because that's what we're talking about. 92.9? Oh, excellent. All the exceptions are there. Deborah has a whole list of exceptions oh. that we could actually 92.8. 92.9. If you just read it quietly, you'll see all the exceptions which really encompass all the noises that you and I. So that's one from Red Hook? From Red Hook. From yeah. Red Hook. Yeah. All the exceptions are there. Snow blowers, snow throwers, emergency yeah. vehicles. Read it. And they express that concern about the daytime levels. Yes. And they've even raised it in the DV. You don't have snow blowers going all the time. Well, what about uh, dirt bikes and snowmobiles and that kind of thing? <laughs> Do you guys? Uh, you don't want them. Yeah. I think that should be. With all the right people, people kind of kind of kind of of some of the time. Why don't you read the kind of kind of exceptions? Have a, right, a right, track right, that's right, 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 like you said, you can't go through it. So that goes back to the question is, at nighttime, are we going to accept the zero? I don't, I don't see how we can control it. it. Zero is kind of... Yeah, it, it just seems logical to me that you'd be able to have a conversation on your property any time of the day that you right. want. Because then if you're closing the car, if you have zero, closing the car door. Well, that's instantaneous. It's right. got to be 15 right, minutes right, or right. more. So, I mean, it's just... And more or less for the continuous noise, music, whatever. But Just read all the exceptions. It's all there. All the things that you were talking about. We can probably but think that, about that's saying that's zero at night. Hmm? Zero right? noise at night. No, they have 50 dBA. It's all there. The, that's why I chose it. And 70 for commercial, 60 for commercial during the night. <laughs> so they, they go, you know, down a little bit. Yeah, I'd rather something. So having the day and night. If we have to have them, I think that makes more sense than having a, a tremendous list of exceptions. And personally, I think 50 is lower than I'd like because, well, like I said, I think you should be able to have a conversation on your property anytime right. that you want. Yeah, um, but whether that the board agrees to 55 or 65 or whatever we come to, if there's just one per night and then during the day, I'd, I'd rather not have a list of we excluded this and we excluded yeah, this and more, we forget one. Excuse me, Adam, one of the reasons why you have a list is so people get the idea of what they can and can't do. It allows them to do a lot more with the exemptions. Okay, exclusions. so that's why but they you, list the you exceptions. Still list them not you talking to your neighbor or right. to your family by your right. property line. Any, what you most likely will come up with is, a, is, is some sort of language that says, you know, and you'll you know, see a list such exceptions. as, but not, you know, limited to or. Yeah, there's, there's ways that they craft those things so you have that ability to not have to come up with a defined 
all inclusive list. So like you say, you know, okay, it's yeah, that's, similar that's, that's, to that's good, George. something right. such as so, like so that. Ours, we, we things typically of, used to maintain lower and wrong list because those things make some lower things like that. I'm sure you can craft that in there so that the intent is clear, which is really what's yeah. We we have that in some of the parts of our zoning law already. Like that's why we we did not mention that wedding venues are allowed, but we determined that they were like events to mm -hmm. some that were allowed. Some other items, yeah. yeah that's how we got, mm -hmm. got that in there. Right. And if, yeah, if, if you do get stuck with a, with if a list when of... When we, we uh, update... Intended to be zoning, definitive. We'll, we'll probably put wedding venues double in there specifically, right. and it'll still be other things that are similar. And who knows, things might develop in the years to come that we haven't even thought of. Mm -hmm. The right. drones are yeah. down here. And but I did put drones in there. <laughs> I, I Can you it. grab I that language know. with Andy and get that put into this so <laughs> yes, it would cover that? Absolutely. Because I think that we all agree that it that would be drones. the way to go. Uh, well, so I think we still need to figure out nighttime some level. night -like time level. Do we have like a general daytime level with exceptions for these, or do we just have the list of exceptions for daytime level? Well, I don't necessarily have a problem with the nighttime, but I mean, if we want to put a level on it, I mean, that. What do you guys think? I mean, that's. You know, I know you want, you want to be 55, but. Um, well, again, you could, if you wanted to allow something, you could come up with a number, you know, let's say four decibels like, above ambient or something of that nature. Um, so it's not something that's in the industry or per the DEC already declared to be a, a new. I thought we wanted to stay away from that above ambient. But you guys you wanted to go, stay away from that originally. You got to go out saying it's measure ambient and, something. And, be different, and it's different in different places. If you're going to do something, it, it needs to be defendable legally, right. right? So if somebody comes into a situation where I wouldn't hope it wouldn't happen, things like that, but where it ends up in court and they're trying to argue and say, well, why, why would you come up with this number that, you know, 60 was okay at night, for instance, or 50? Why? Um, well, because we want to then you'd be able to say, well, because the day. So this, that, the other thing. Day, they make 60 at um, night. As opposed to, you know, somebody pointing at an obvious standard that exists and say, well, how come everybody else says this? What was your rationale for, for what you were saying? And because we, we picked 65 for the daytime and we want a little quieter at night, so we picked 60. <laughs> Or 55, uh, right. which is, which is if half we, of 60. If we pick 60 or 65, then our standard is level of conversation. If we pick something else, then we can look at whatever else is lower. Right, but you got to remember, to, it's a logarithmic scale. So if that sound increases by 10 decibels over what exists to every human being on the earth, that is perceived as a doubling. Right, I get that. So if the sound in Claremont, in most places at night, is probably going to be 30, something like that. Except in the two. spring when we have the peepers Except out the and it's about 90. Right. What I'm saying is, so if, if that's the, I'm just using it as an example. Right. And then you say it's 60, which again, you're the board, you, you, you know, went way over and above beyond doubling. So it would be, I think, a hard case for Andy to go to court and try and justify, well, why was that a reasonable determination that at night, for some reason, you could quadruple <laughs> the sound that existed before you decided to make noise on a regular basis now, night after night. you got to remember once it's the law, it's the law. Right. Um, I think people would have a hard time swallowing that as a neighbor to say, hey, yeah, that's okay. It used to be nice and quiet. I heard the peepers. Now I don't hear the peepers. What happened? All right, I'll just take more questions. I, I just want to say, I think the stand, whatever number you pick is a better way to go than the ambient, because what concerns me as a long-term resident of this town, and it has to do with the tail of the wagging the dog and the cost to the taxpayers of incredible, you know, measuring and enforcement and the picky oon stuff that happens with that. And we don't have the tax base that Red, Red Hook has. We are the town of Claremont. We are, you know, 3,000 people versus Red Hook. I like the idea personally of you picking a number, a number for the daytime, a number for the nighttime, and that way the code enforcement officer can come, he can measure for over 15 minutes the average thing, and if it fails, it fails. But this ambient thing, it varies with, you know, time of year, I mean, the 17-year locust, I had to hide in my house. The noise was just yeah. making me so crazy. 
Yeah. You know, it was quite loud. It was very, very loud. That's why I could never do anything about they don't because I'm the law. But, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is I think a flat number which will mean that we're not having you know, the code enforcer officer, what, $30 an hour is going out and coming out every Saturday and measuring and, you know, and that, who pays for that? We all pay for that as taxpayers, so think about that. Yeah, and, and that's why you have the DBs. Uh, they're standardized. So I have to reinforce what you were just saying. And you're making it too complicated with the ambience. Okay, this way people know what they can and can't do. And I think that's what we're leaning towards anyway. That's what we discussed. One more question, then we're done. I, I think the, uh, the research that I've been looking at would indicate that uh, staying with the decibel level is probably a uh, more common sense way of approaching this, and it reflects the best practices in municipalities, both in Columbia County and in New York State. So that's not unusual by any means. It probably uh, is, is a method that people can understand. Mm -hmm. uh, I, didn't, I didn't end up at that position. I started about like our conversations with the better way of measuring the ambient sound. Mm -hmm. But I think it is complicated. And I think it um, can appear to be arbitrary and capricious uh, for a dozen different reasons. So having a more uniform standard, whatever that right number is, uh, is important. And having very clear guidelines relative to the times of day that those numbers are in effect. And I would argue that 10 o'clock is the most reasonable starting time for nighttime in terms of people sleeping and the decibel levels that are important for good rest. And again, there's research that would support uh, 10 o'clock or even 9 o'clock in some municipalities in Columbia County, um, and even lower given the agricultural nature of Claremont. So in summary, I think staying with those numbers as decibel levels is probably more reasonable and best, reflecting best practices in the municipal law. And then secondly, having two or three, a lot of the municipalities have three time zones, um, you know, seven to uh, seven, seven to nine, nine to seven, to allow for some of these differences that people were articulating uh, mm -hmm. to reflect the complexity of living in a community. So, you know, I think that's uh, is helpful. All right, thank you. Um, so, I think we really should determine if we're going to set a different level for night. I, you know, if we don't want to have it at zero, we should come up with a number that's acceptable. I mean, George, you said uh, 65 is very loud at night. I think it would. Um, you know, it's very hard for us to pick a number. I don't want to just pick a number, but uh, you know. The, yeah, we can run it past Andy and see if he has something. I mean, we had we heard red hooks. We heard red hooks, but red hook has a lot more ambient noise than, than Claremont's going to have. So. For their number, it's going to be a lot higher than us. Is it possible to even maybe get some of the data? You know, like he was saying. Right? So maybe Thursday morning, we'll he talked about Friday night, Saturday night. He's got to change that. Yeah, it's going to take a sound. Yeah, I'm going to have to have a look at that. Yeah, so maybe something that we can relate to at a night time that we would, you know. And you got to remember that uh, a lot of these sounds that are given um, aren't actually, they're not the property line. So when you look right. at these standard charts and it says like, you know, a lawnmower is 85. Right, but you're Unless they property. give you a distance, it's, yeah. the distance is like, I think three feet, five feet is the standard measurement. So I forget if it's three or five, but it's one of those, it's very close. Um, you're gonna start getting a drastic drop off as you double that distance. Right. So again, but if you're low, you got to go the property around the yeah, around the sound is changing. You're not always on the property. So again, you're not creating that that level at the property line, right. um, and it's not continuous. Exactly. It stops. So if we go from 65 to 55, well, that means put a flat number and say it's loud. That That's means that you could only talk half as loud during the evening. Okay. Yes. Right. No yelling at your wife. House next door, sitting there trying to relax and that. I do that inside. Tell her that you're not very happy. Right. Yep. George, so if, if, if we have uh, 65 during the, during the day, mm -hmm. and then at night time we want it to be quieter, if we were to make it 55, that would mean it would be half as loud, right? No. Well, you said, you said it's doubled if you, when Double. you go up 10 decibels. It all, it's all relative. So to if, I go down, if I go down 10 decibels. It's relative to ambient. 
So you have to know what AMC so is. Right we're start, we're not starting like up 65. Triple no, words, of course. No, you have to end up like down at like 40 or at least something like that. Even at these, like, even at, um, you know, if you're, you're talking at like, uh, you know, to, uh, again, you're getting into discussing the technical information or whatever you want to say. But I mean, if the sound level for the day is 65 all day long, right? And then you were to drop it, you would you would be lowering that level. What I'm saying is, no one's going to continuously for the day have a level at 65. It, it, it's well, talking it's about very 65 difficult. being normal conversation. You want to feel that have a conversation on the property line at 65 dB mm -hmm. and, and, and and during, during the day. No, we, no, we're having it during the day. He wants to be able to have it at night. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you you should probably talk a little softer. At night than you do during the day because somebody <laughs> might be sleeping. Mm -hmm. We're so, back up three feet. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> right? Talking about back invasion up. of Why are you standing on the property state. line talking? Because yeah. uh, people your are neighbor. sleeping in your house. But <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. But no. Uh, I, would, I would caution us about the, the magic of 65. There's no magic about 65 per se. <laughs> right. And uh, 65 to characterize conversation at 65 is a very loud conversation. Uh, the normal range of yes. conversation is 50 to 65, depending on people's voices. So 65 is already establishing a, a much higher level. So again, it's, it's somewhat relative to what George is suggesting, but you've got to pick a number. And, and uh, staying within that range is, is, again, typical of what other municipalities do. It's not outrageous or irresponsible by any means. I'm sure there's a, uh, a value for quiet neighborhoods, for instance, at night versus day, etc. Um, it's been studied extensively, um, so you could you could go that route if you wanted to pick a, a number. So at least you know, and I could research that with Andy to say, okay, well, yeah, we're going to go here, so we have a standard. At least then, you, one of my point is, then you have a defendable position of what you, why you're allowing this number, because based on X number of studies, it's been determined that these are the average sound levels in a quiet, you know. Um, Situation for, for giving well, it, really if you will, to as opposed to just picking a number that we all feel is great, which may not. Be. Right, right. Yeah, let me. Uh, I'm going to only take one more question, and then we're going to. George, on. professionally, when an audiologist tests, the speech range is much lower than that. Mm -hmm. Sixty-five for a conversation like now is quite loud, and I haven't mm -hmm. even reached it. All right. Depends where that sound So the, the speech <laughs> range is much lower lines. than that. Yeah. It's so I think 25 to right. some 35 or 40. Just, just yeah. as a, a point of reference, if you go to WebMD as a, as a relative source of accurate information, they talk about 60 decibels for residents during the course of the day as being reasonable. Yeah. That's WebMD. Mm -hmm. and it, again, represents medical consensus. I don't have a problem with the 65 under a day if we word it like we're talking about, such mm -hmm. as exceptions and that. So, you know, eliminates all the problems that we're going to have. Um, the night time is what we have to consider. Do we want it at zero or do we want to put another level down that's uh, maybe half of that, 30 or 40 or something like that? And that way, we at least would be allowing noise, but much lower than annoying your neighbor. 30 or 40 seems low, though. Because well, zero will never happen. I mean, there's already noise out right, being right. generated. That's, what I, that's why I was trying to gauge it with ambient, because there's already noise being generated. So if you say, for instance, the sound level is, let's say, just picking a number, that I know is going to work in my favor for the discussion. Let's say you said 30. Yeah. Well, it's already 30. So now you've just told people you, you do absolutely positively nothing. That's what, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We need to have a reason why we're picking the number that we're picking. And you're saying 55 is twice as loud as 65. So the way I'm talking right now is probably what? 55, 65? Not necessarily where you're sitting, sitting in the yeah. room, too, because what I sit, I can hear him as well because this is an old building. Mm -hmm. So, but let's not. That'd be right at the property line. <laughs> okay. right. We're I love right. to shout. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I'm saying, because it depends where that sound is. I can hear everything that you say. <laughs> Which is why we say, George, the, the I can't line. hear anything he says. Because that's where the meter would be <laughs> legally quiet. Right. George, it says that no person shall. Make the sound, cause the sound to be generated. Generated at the property line. But they're not generating the peepers of that. So if it's right. what they're generating, would you know, you, then you, then it would be up to the whoever's measuring it 
to consider ambient, even Deeper, though it's not in the law. Locusts, cicadas, all that stuff drowns out whatever sound you make. And I've been called to those calls. Yeah. They're louder than what everyone else is creating. So you actually, that sound overpowers the sound being generated, and, and you actually are only hearing the peepers. Out of curiosity, do you recall how many decibels peepers came up at? <laughs> <laughs> it depends where you put your sound. The closer you get to it, I'm yeah. close to the there we go. Well, I, have nice words. Words. I think we need to move very, on. Very, uh, very what I'd like to do is, is maybe have you take a look and mm -hmm. talk to Ann and see if there's any way about coming up with a lower number if they're I mean, if it's something we want to consider, I mean, I know everyone wants to leave it alone, but mm -hmm. you know, maybe we come up with a compromise, I don't know, 40 or 50 or something, you know, something that would make it a little quieter so it's not annoying noise on your property line all night long. Because, I mean, if we set this, somebody could set up a radio just to I your neighbor and run it all night long. You want to hear it all night long? Probably not. So or a I mean, they could do that today. Well, I mean, it's, well, I, mean it's, I know what you're saying, but I also know, you know what could happen. They hear the six to come. So, no. so I think a little bit lower level at night would be better. Maybe not necessarily zero, but definitely maybe we should think definitely. about a lower level. Mm -hmm. So if you can maybe take a look and see what other laws are out there. I know Red Hook has one oh, yeah. in a lower level, but you know that's a totally different. That's like you know a city compared to us. So I mean. Their, uh, their noise levels are going to be higher to start with, so, but uh, maybe we'll take a look around and see what the counties have um, in Columbia County. Separate conversation with George, I was asking if it would also be possible to bring like an example of, you know, let's say 40 decibels or something. This is something that would be equivalent to that at night. You know, mm -hmm. something to give us a... So we can actually uh, hear it and see what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, an understanding of what that would be. But that's going to be a problem if you, if you bring up a sound like that into this room. It's not the same environment. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm just saying, like a lawnmower. Okay, you know, so just terrible. verbal, not oh. an actual sound. I'm referring to something that we can relate to. Of, uh, you know, a can opener in your kitchen. You know, you know, something that we can relate to what that sound would be uh, that we're referencing as 40 decibels or 30, whatever it happens. Like the mixer. Yeah. Yeah, just <laughs> something. You just need to do is a little radio, put it on a certain level, mm -hmm. measure 40, bring it in the plate for us so we know what it sounds like. Walk outside and turn the sound meter. <laughs> yeah. But, All right. We, uh, when we started this, I was thinking that we probably would be simple enough to fix it. We could schedule the public hearing for next month and, and get a copy, you know, halfway through. Mm -hmm. It sounds like now, with the discussion that's been going on, we probably should move it out one more month. Mm -hmm. and have a clean copy to say next month we've got a clean copy and yes we'll set the public hearing. Yep, we can distribute well, to everybody. And don't then. push it too far because people go away on vacation. Well, we'll have it ready for that, June. That might be helpful. suggesting that we have a draft, of a draft, like the third revision of the draft, published for a more general discussion. Yeah, have us a draft, and then the next sure. month the next month we'll hearing. set the public hearing. But uh, next Again. month, definitely a draft. That would be very helpful. Right. I, I think we should be able to do that. I think we're very close here. We're just we are. We got a couple of minor. Members. You know, this is obviously the biggest point we found here that we're discussing. Yeah. Uh, everything else, I think, is very minor. But uh, and there's a couple things you want to include. Um, mm -hmm. I did have, you have another question? Anna? I had one more thing. All right. So um, we added to the penalty the penalty for. Um, filing false claims, for which is, uh, if you call when there's not a overly loud noise, more than currently it says four times for unfounded, false, or frivolous what, what accusations or complaints, page 10, um, then said person shall be liable to compensate the town of Claremont for any costs associated with pursuing said false or frivolous accusations or complaints. Yes. And I thought it was good that we added that. I just think four is a little bit high. I think one is way too low because you might think it's legitimate and you just don't realize, but I would think two or maybe three would be more uh, realistic than four because you can harass your neighbors pretty well with four complaints. Well, um, I mean, it would certainly allow a couple times because it could be an error you might not know. You know right. Like, I'm just thinking once times, you get to I mean three, yeah. I mean four, you're right, four is quite a few. I mean I could go with three, I don't know about two, because you could make an error a couple of times. And, and it three. is over twenty four yeah, months, 24 so months. Yeah. three, three, three is twenty four months. Yeah, I don't have a problem with changing that. If anybody else has any issues with it, but I mean I, I wouldn't want to go below three, I don't think, but I mean that's up to the 
or three cents. Three cents. I'm fine with either one to be on over 24 months. Yeah, it's two-year period, so four times. Uh, I I know what you're saying. I mean, certainly if that's four times within a month, I mean, it's, that, <laughs> that that would it's. I mean, it doesn't say that you couldn't do that. Right. 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 So I, yeah, that's I once every it. six months, basically. Let's well, say you know, if you leave it four. <laughs> I mean, so. if you want to call in four times in, in one month and then not call in again for a year and a half, <laughs> I mean, it, it still fits the criteria, so I, I, I can see Evan's point with that. Well, what do you think? What do you guys want to do? You want to leave it four or you want to take three? It's up, I, I, I don't have a problem. I would go to three. Three? Three. three. Okay. And if we start getting a real problem with you that, got that George? we'll move it down. Yeah. Three? All right. If it seems to be an issue, we can always revisit that, but, uh, yeah. all right. And I think, uh, I didn't have anything else on that. I know the time is the one thing, so we discussed that. Anybody else have any, uh, questions? So if we clean that up, get the language from Andy on a couple of things and see if we can get it put together, then we can release this and talk about it next month and then set the hearing. It is staying very variance. Yes. Yes. I think we're, we're, yeah. yes. Okay. I just have a question about the holidays that rotate throughout the calendar, like July 4th, New Year's Eve, which might fall on a Monday or a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, are exceptions being made for that in this code, um, you know, to allow people to have a 4th of July party or a New Year's Eve party or maybe Sunday night of Columbus Day weekend, not Columbus Day weekend, but Labor Day weekend or something like that. I just want to know. That's all. Um, it's currently, it's, it's what's it's in there. These are normal things that you take into account. If you read all of the exceptions and everything else, there are normal things that go on in the community. Well, I, don't, I think we need to base it on the document that we have right now. I don't yeah, I don't think it's in here. No. So I, it, I, I, I think you're right. It should be that way, but. At the same time, with like uh, Independence Day, you, you could go a whole week of fireworks. Uh, right, those uh, are reasonable activities. I don't really I, have a problem with that. I don't, yeah, I'm just thinking, I have a friend who lives in a different town, and she and her neighbor have been at war for 10 years now. I mean, it's war. It's a total war. And she should move to Claremont. And, I mean, it's kind of crazy. It's totally crazy. I can't listen to it anymore. It's been going on for 10 years, but it's really crazy. Mm -hmm. And if you end up with a neighbor and you're like not getting, I try to get along with my neighbors, but I'm just saying, you can end up with a, a bad situation. You buy a home, you don't realize you've got a black home next door or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they could, you know, that's why I'm saying they come after you for your 4th yeah. of July, your 4th of July party you have for years and years. So I, I just say that maybe you want to. Maybe, you know, address for the July or the Sunday of like Memorial Day weekend or Labor Day weekend or something. Well, I, I think we have verbiage in there for a celebratory, like uh, religious ceremonies, things like that. I don't know if there's something specific for holidays. No, I think we would have to add like national holidays we recognize as a weekend. Which yeah. yeah. should be in some of those codes. Those yeah. are normal kind of functions. Yeah. So Section 3 on page 7, C is the closest we have, but it's not really, it doesn't quite fit. We could add another to that list, or the other way you could do it would be to change the I think the easiest way to be would just be add a line in it. You know, mm -hmm. National holidays, holidays we recognize as yeah. uh, weekend hours. Or, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's what it is. You want to just suspend the whole code for nationally recognized? No. Uh, no. 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 That could be a, that could be a myth. No. <laughs> if we could just put you know add a line in national holiday be observed as holiday or uh, weekend hours. Yeah. Because that would make the uh, neighbors that are at war wait just waiting for those times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can't we can't account for every single detail. Let's uh, let's get the uh, the basis covered here. Um, but if we could add that in, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. It'll only going you know not for what seven holidays and all this. All right. I think that uh, I think that'll be uh, most of it. When we get it cleaned up, we can present that. Um,
you know, and then next month we'll have a final discussion on what's left and set up a public hearing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No problem. We'll make these corrections and go talk to Andy and see if we can come up with them. Get them first thing in the morning. <laughs> Thank you for coming down this evening. That's not for sure. This thing is Okay. Um, moving on. Again, thanks for coming in this evening. Thank you. Well, Thank committee you. reports. Let's move on with Bob. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I think we just uh, covered everything. <laughs> Keep it short, then. Yeah, I did, just uh, reiterate, I think we should wait to set the public hearing until the next meeting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if there is any additional small tweaks next time, we'll, you know, we can go forward with the public hearing. I think we have 90% of the diagram. Just uh, yeah. 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 mostly yes. completely by next month. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, but one of the things that uh, uh, you know, the board members know our, our zoning enforcement officer is going for training this week. You know, he'll get his full 24 hours. And uh, we've paid for that class, I think, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, probably, should, <coughs> probably should be paying for his travel and lodging also. Yeah, where, where is it located? Uh, Syracuse. Oh, okay. <coughs> he was going up tonight. They, they do get a, a lower rate on, on the hotel. Yeah. What is this? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Zoning enforcement officer training. He has to get 24 hours of training every year, and he tends to try to do it at, a, at one shot rather than try to piecemeal it sure. a little bit here and a little bit there. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll see that when he comes back. I'll assume we're about to put that through the abstracts. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you uh, I don't really have much of an update. The uh, web committee, uh, we met again and uh, there was some productive discussion, but we didn't really have anything that's ready to present to the board yet. Okay. So we'll continue working on that. Um, Next one. All right. Oh. Sure. On the web, don't forget to put down that it'll be in two more months we'll have the meeting a public hearing on the noise regulations. Yeah, right? that would get put up after we actually have a scheduled okay. set the hearing. But um, once we have the draft document, I'll okay, we'll we'll just make it. sure because people like have to give enough time. Okay. We'll just be draft. Yeah. We can do that once we well, once we have. Well, again, yeah, we won't do that until we set the public, public hearing, hearing, just in case something it. happens yeah. and we don't do it. We just want to make sure once we set the hearing, we post that on there. So. Yeah. Okay, Chris? Yeah. Uh, no, not this week. Not this week? Not this week. Go on. Um, I just want to thank the Village Green Committee. On um, March 24th, it was a, there was still snow on the ground, and it was cold and windy, but we had a really nice turnout for the Easter egg hunt, I have to say that. Um, I would say that the numbers may have been a little bit less than last year, but it was still a really nice turnout. And, um, you know, it's, there's a core group of the village green that people that I don't want to mention them because I'll forget someone's name but you know that we're really fortunate to have them that you know people that can really be counted on and they come through so it was a really nice event and um, that's all I have for right now. Okay, good. Thank you. All right um, old business uh, just to, these are basically some updates uh, the park development committee uh, we have had people show interest uh, we've heard from uh, several members of the community that would like to be on the committee. So um, what I'd like to do is appoint that committee this evening so we can uh, start setting up some meetings and going on uh, discussing this. So um, I'd like to appoint Bob as the board member that's going to be the uh, head of the committee. Um, Mary Howard, which we talked into doing this. Uh, Sarah is going to be on the committee. Sarah Takakis is on there. Uh, Louise Colleen. Um, Ellen Earl. Amy Perella yeah, and, and Phyllis Heiko. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that makes up seven members. For now, that's all we're going to appoint. I do have a couple of professionals I'm going to discuss, uh, maybe adding to the committee that I haven't talked to yet, so I don't want to uh, mention any names. But uh, anybody is welcome to participate in uh, the open meeting. But uh, for now, we'll just hold the committee to this, these members until we make any other appointments. And then uh, we'll start setting up some preliminary meetings and getting, getting the discussion rolling. 
Um, obviously, uh, we want to tour the property. Um, the first being here, so just to take a walk around. But uh, you know, we finally got the snow off the ground, so we can probably do something the next month here. So, yeah, probably probably uh, plan on waiting till earlier mid May, and then we'll we'll have probably have a Saturday morning. Oh, meeting. unless it snows again. <laughs> it snows well, that's again. why we're waiting till May. Yeah, wait till June. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, uh, you, know, you know there's no such thing as global if there, warming, so. If there's snow in, in May, then you'll have to wear boots. Right. So, so what, what I, what can I, I like charge to, that to the town? <laughs> you can try. <laughs> <laughs> what my thought is right now is, is to have a meeting in, inside to start with and just kind of go through, and some of you have heard my vision for what we want to do out there, but i just go through that with all the committee in a little bit more detail, and then take a, a walking tour. So those of you that are here, you know, you may have wear walking shoes, and then come back in, and, and then uh, listen to input from the committee members. And we're talking basically about a, little, uh, a veterans monument we'd like to put up on the hill behind the cemetery. We're talking about walking trails, and interpretive nature trails and uh, some uh, different types of floral activities and things. and But we'll, we'll go through that at the committee meeting. And you'll be open to hearing other people's vi visions because some of oh, the yeah. people, yeah. Uh, you know, have been gardeners and involved in well, that's, yeah, that's why I want them as for a long as well. time. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've shared some of my vision in past meetings I'll do it in a little more detail at the first meeting, and then we'll tour the, and then we'll come back, and then I have questions that maybe some of the things that I'm thinking about don't work too well. It may take us 10 years to do it. It's not all going to get done the first year, but uh, I'm definitely looking at some of the, you know landscape people and landscape architects. I think one of them is a landscape mm -hmm. architect, and, and uh, you know getting some professional input. I just have a quick question on the on this park. Is our maintenance budget that's going to be funded by the town, or is somebody given money that's going to fund the maintenance after it's developed? Well, that's uh, that's all stuff we have to address. We do not have a maintenance line on it as of yet. Um, we're trying to do as much maintenance-free plantings and stuff like that we can. Um, the highway department will be mowing it, but other than that, we don't really have. That's what I was wondering. Right. Yeah. We don't really have. They, they they do mow for us now, and they will continue. In fact, we're, we're uh, it's really just the beginning. We're we're buying a, a larger lawn mower. You know, to, because there's a lot more to mow now that we've got the remediation done. Uh, one of the questions that I have for some of the professional people is, I'd like. Yeah, I have some thoughts about some things that I think will, can be done almost as wild flower growth and, and not have a, need a lot of maintenance. But I'm not a professional, so I, that's a question I want to discuss in, in probably in the first meeting. Well, I think I've already, uh, Louise Callan has given me a group of sources. Some of those sources fit into your vision and they're experts in the field, like a bird sanctuary. Uh, people who have done this before or who have, you know, given their thoughts to many communities. So the experts in the field. So I think many of us have walked through that area or driven, you know, through it. So by the time May comes, if it doesn't snow again, if we can collect the sources, I think that'd be a good thing. So we can get yeah, you mentioned bird, from bird sanctuary. What I've some mentioned several times is pollinators, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, monarch butterflies and bees, those are areas that we'd like to And there are all sorts of good things so we can hear from some professionals yeah. and they should be walking through it with the group. And if we just listen and well, get we will have some professionals on the committee, I believe. Good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think so. Yes, we will. And I want to apologize for Louise's name, Callan. I pretty mispronounced it. It's clean. It's clean. It's okay. I'm sure she's heard it all different. All right. Maybe I'm okay. We'll let it go. You're okay. It's all right. All right. You you were right. I was right? Okay. All right. So, yes, we will uh, certainly address all that. And that's like I said, we want to get started, get the preliminary meeting, and get going on it. So, we got some ideas. So, uh, we certainly will work on that. And I will set that up when it's ready. Um, 
Noise ordinance policy, I think we beat that uh, good enough tonight. Um, we don't really have any more discussion on that for now. And moving on to new business, I have none, because I knew this was going to take all that. So uh, we really don't have anything pressing to go over in any new business. Um, just a couple updates. Uh, I did receive mortgage tax preliminary numbers for the uh, semi-annual payment. Uh, our payment's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $26,000, which is good. We budgeted 40, so we get half now, half in November, I think it is. Um, so we're actually going to be a little bit above what we thought for the first payment. Doesn't mean anything for the second payment, but at least it's in the right direction. So that's that's good. good. Um, we just received our payment for the franchise fees from Hilltop Communication, which we received once a year. That did go down a little bit. Uh, $1,250 is this year's uh, franchise payment. Uh, we did budget $1,300. It's $50 less than we anticipated, but uh, certainly it's uh, in the ballpark. Uh, that's continued to go down over the years. Um, Ten years ago when I started, it was, I think, around $2,000, $1,900. So it's dropped uh, over the years tremendously. So. Um, if they keep raising their rates, and they drop more. Well, they're, they're uh, go undergoing a large expansion. So uh, once they get done with the fiber network, it's going to be uh, uh, you know, triple the size of what they've been dealing with. So it's, uh, it's a big expansion for them, a lot of money invested. So. Um, Supervisor report, just a few things to update. Um, that was basically it. <laughs> uh, I just want to, again, thank, uh, I know Dawn mentioned the Easter egg hunt, uh, thank the Village Green and the volunteers. I wasn't feeling well that day. I didn't actually make it. First one I missed in quite a few years, uh, but uh, I'm glad to hear it was a nice turnout. Kids had a good time. I want to thank everybody that was involved in helping and uh, putting that event together. Um, I know the kids enjoy that every year. A uh, couple updates, um, I don't know, it's been in the headlines of the paper a few, uh, last week, I think it was, uh, Bob wrote a copy in about uh, Amtrak fencing off uh, along five towns down through uh, Columbia County, fencing off the river access, the, uh, the uh, rail access crossing the, the river, or excuse me, crossing over to the river, um, does not directly affect us. Um, the towns are, uh, Germantown is the closest town, obviously they have three, I think three points of access. Yeah. Um, they have asked me, the supervisor reached out to ask me for, for my support, and uh, I certainly would support them um, in helping fight this cause because uh, they're asking for additional meetings. Uh, they want to know exactly what's going on. I mean, if they're gonna put these gates up and lock it so you can't get across, it raises several concerns about uh, access, protection for the people down there. Uh, and, and anybody wants to access the river, which is, it would make it very difficult, obviously. So um, I did tell him I would certainly support him. He's got, I think there's a rally going on in Germantown. Did I have the date on it? The 22nd or 29th? Well, there was something in today's paper that didn't have yeah, that. Yeah. What's important about those three accesses, you, if you have a boat. The boat launch. Absolutely. The boat launch, there's a table where you have picnics. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, people just hang out there. And we haven't had any accidents or anything like that. So, uh, you know, and a lot of, some people who live in Claremont use that access for their boats. Absolutely. So we definitely want to support that. Absolutely. So I've actually signed a letter that uh, he sent in uh, requesting more information, requesting more hearings on it uh, to find out uh, what can be done to, uh, you know, to, to stop this and, and, and stop the restriction of the access at least over to the river. So. Um, other than the rally coming up, I don't know at this point. I'm pretty sure we have a meeting Wednesday night with the county. Uh, I'm pretty sure this will probably be a county matter because it affects five towns in the county. Um, I believe it will probably be brought up in the county and challenged at the county level as well. Uh, but just to give everybody a little bit of update that I have, that we will be uh, we will be you know helping out and supporting the fighting on this. So. You want a motion or a resolution from the board to support? Um, I don't think it's necessary, but if you'd like uh, the town to be behind it, I would probably. Probably not be a bad thing since it doesn't look like I'm out there doing it myself. <laughs> I would go to uh, support the access to the river in the places that have access at this time. And, and, and also, it was, was mentioned, and it is true that uh, Claremont has, because of the recreation fee that we pay, that, that allows us to have access to their parks mm -hmm. for Claremont residents, so it does affect. Claremont in that sense. And since we don't have an access, we do use theirs. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, all right. We have a motion? Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Who was the second? Brew, Chris? Brew. I was the second. Yeah, okay. Uh, the other thing, um, which was other, also in the paper, has been a uh, roundabout plan for the Rick Van Winkle Bridge approach. Uh, if anybody's read that uh, article last weekend, it was in the front page. Um, I don't have a lot of detail on that as of yet. Um, it's only been out for you know a couple weeks. I've heard about it. Um, and again, I'm sure this will come up on the county level as well. Uh, but I think um, safety is the main concern of why this is being proposed. I know they've had some bad accidents in an intersection. It is a little tricky if you're not familiar with it. Um, most of us that travel it would obviously be comfortable with it because we've done it for years, but I know that's why they're looking into it. I don't know uh, too much detail as of yet, but I'm sure I'll have uh, an update this week. So uh, I'll update everybody next week on, or excuse me, next month on uh, where we stand on that as well, where that's heading. Is but, that uh, pretty much a done deal? You know, I don't think it's a done deal, but uh, I, I just don't have enough information yet to tell you. I don't think it is, but that that intersection, as you say, for people that are not familiar with it, and even people that live in the area that use it only rarely, it is very difficult to maneuver. Uh, it was, it, you know, it was a poor design from the beginning. It can round, be. roundabout would probably improve that, even though personally, I don't like roundabouts. The state likes them; they've been putting them in a lot of places. The other alternative would be coming over the bridge onto 23, going straight, and then just having a traffic light with 9G coming into the 23. Right. That, but the, what they have there now is not good. Yeah, I, I definitely and I've gotten used to it. You know, I go through there often enough mm -hmm. that I can do it. But the first even, time you go through, it's it's not easy. Even if you're used to it, you're in danger from other drivers who right, aren't. Right. Well, I had a friend who lived locally in Germantown and got killed about 10 years ago there. Okay. So, yeah. And that's true, that's why it's all went into this, you know, this study that they've done and that's why they're proposing this and that's, you know, again, I don't have enough detail to comment on it, but I will certainly find out more about it and have an update next month. Um, other than that, uh, I don't really have a lot to update the county business. Um, anybody has any questions, please get a hold of me and ask me, you know, do what I can to find out. And uh, I'll move on to pay the abstracts. So I'll start with Trust in Aid Agency Abstract Number Three, Voucher Number Six, in the amount of one hundred fifty-one dollars fifty cents. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. I don't see a slip for highway. <coughs> uh, the total is on the bottom, I believe. Too. Right there. I didn't attach them. I never got to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Okay. Move to pay uh, highway abstract number four, vouchers number 25 through 40, in the amount of $13,013.48. And and second. One, motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Go on. Okay. Okay. I move we pay general, the general prepaid abstract number four. Vouchers 89 through 91 and a total of $330.76. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I move we pay general abstract uh, number 4A. Um, vouchers 92 through 119 in the amount of 14640 and 70 cents. Second. In favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, last but not least, we'll move on to uh, public comment. Communication to the board. I'm allowed quite a bit throughout the meeting. I can't imagine it's too much. Uh, <laughs> Very good. If you might just stand up if you don't mind standing up there for us on the comment period. Uh, I could have had back in January uh, uh, information that that you're asking for in terms of examples of noise levels for different uh, activities around the house. So I'd like just to distribute that and make that available to the town, just because I had done some work on that earlier. Sure. So, it's yours. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else? No, going once, going twice. Oh, oh just, see? Just, just, just to say, I want to agree with uh, Phyllis. I, I certainly want to. Now, but I, I appreciate since December this conversation 
Um, I think it's a very important conversation, and I appreciate your time and effort in sustaining this conversation. So, just as a community member for 37 years here, I just want to say thank you. It's, uh, it's nice thank to see you. Well, you're welcome. We're trying to uh, get as close to acceptable for most people as possible. Obviously, it won't please everybody, but uh, hopefully, it covers most. All right. Uh, if there's no other comment, I'll uh, now entertain a motion to adjourn. So we'll Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you.